All right, let's work a few examples of solving equations by completing the square. For the special case now of a equals 1. So we'll kind of keep things simple to start, and we'll work some examples later when a is not equal to 1. But for now, a is going to be equal to 1. And what we're asked to do is solve the following equations, and we're going to solve it by completing the square. So we're going to use what we just learned about the perfect square trinomials to get these equations into a nice form. All right, so here's my equation. x squared plus 16x plus 20 equals 0. And when we say solve the equations, what that means is find all the values of x that make this side end up equaling that side, in this case, 0. There's a lot of ways to do this. We are told specifically to do this by completing the square. So here's the steps we're always going to follow when we're trying to complete the square to solve this quadratic equation. First, we're going to move constants over to the right. So I initially had a plus 20 here. So if I subtract 20 from both sides, it goes away from this side. 0 minus 20 is minus 20. So I've subtracted 20 from both sides. Now we're going to use what we know about our perfect square trinomials. If I look over here, I see a b of 16. So 16 over 2 squared is what I'm going to add to both sides of this equation. 16 over 2 is 8. 8 squared is 64. So I'm going to add 64 to both sides of the equation. So that's what I did right here on this line. I haven't changed anything because I did the exact same thing to both sides. Why did I do that? Well, now this has the form of a perfect square trinomial. It is x plus 8 squared. That's the whole reason I added this in is so I could get this perfect square trinomial to pop out. On the right side, I have minus 20 plus 64. That is 44. And now I'm ready to do my next steps. I have x plus 8 quantity squared equals 44. If I take the square root of both sides, on the left, the square goes away, and I'm left with x plus 8. And on the right, I have plus or minus the square root of 44. The square root of 44 is approximately 6.63. So now I'm left with this line right here. Really, that's two equations, right? That's how we read this plus minus. One of those equations is x plus 8 equals positive 6.63. The other equation is x plus 8 equals a negative 6.63. Now, each of these equations is very easy to solve. I'll just subtract 8 there, and I'll get x equals basically a negative 1.37 or so. And on this side, I'll add 8 and I'll get x equals, you know, 14.63. You do have to be careful with the rounding, obviously. To get this answer here, I actually went back and plugged in, you know, square root of 44 into my calculator. So after I added in the 8, you know, it rounded a little bit differently. So do be careful about that. But the main thing here is, you know, working how to complete the square. So what do these answers mean? So I've now found two values for x. One is minus 1.37. The other is minus 14.63. Each of these values, if I plug it in up here, I will end up getting zero for that quantity. All right, let's do another example. Work through that process again. So here's the equation. h squared minus 10x minus 6 equals zero. And I'm going to solve this equation, meaning find all the values for h such that h squared minus 10x minus 6 equals zero. I'm going to do that by completing the square. So again, we're going to follow the process. We're going to move all the constants to the right. So if I add 6 to both sides, I end up with this. Now I'm going to examine this side. I'm going to force it to have a perfect square. So b is a minus 10. So I'm going to add in a minus 10 over 2 squared. A negative 10 over 2 is a negative 5. Quantity minus 5 squared is 25. So I'm going to add 25 to both sides of the equation. I've now forced this to have a perfect square form of the form h minus 5. Remember, whatever you see up here is what ended up going right there. So h minus 5 squared equals 31. Take the square root of both sides. The squared goes away when I take the square root. And on this side, I have plus minus square root 31. There's always two solutions there when you take the square root. If I plug in my calculator what the square root of 31 is, it's about 5.57. And now I really have two equations. h minus 5 equals a positive 5.57. And h minus 5 equals a negative 5.57. 
I can solve both these by just adding 5 to both sides. If I add 5 to both sides, I get h equals 10.57 and h equals 0.57. So I found two values again. Again, these are the solutions to our starting equation. We found the values for h that make that equal to 0, and we've done it by completing the square.